Hello once again everyone, and welcome back to getting more out of Angelo's broadsword. So today we're going to be tackling lesson seven. Now this is kind of the first long lesson, but it's really not, because even though the lesson itself contains a lot of actions, what they really are is just a repeat of the same action back and forth. So this is one of the first symmetrical lessons, wherein both the defender and the antagonist shall perform the same pattern back to back. And this one in particular can be very fun to do because it's basically I show him how to do something, then he does it back, etc., etc. Now, this combination is going to kind of branch off what we have been doing, where we're going to use the outside halfhanger as well as the outside guard to defend against the weakness that is St. George. So, not that St. George is awesome, just that it has one very big glaring problem. That being, the outside of my body is quite exposed if I take St. George too often. Right here and right here are wonderful targets to take. And so if you're going to use St. George, which this system does a lot, you need to be able to move into the outside and into the outside half hanger quite fluently. So, helping me once again is Jason. First we're going to show the entire lesson, and then we're going to break it down a little bit. So, slow, begin. Aha, I gotcha. We'll try again. Wonderful. So, let's break down what happened. So the way this pattern works out is we begin with an exchange of blows to show that we're both taking the seven, uh, sorry, St. George. Boom. Now at this point, as I'm going back to St. George, Jason's going to target my wrist as we've done before, and so I'm going to bring my arm down with my shift into the outside guard. Now a big thing about this is you want to make this small. This is not a feint. What this is, is I'm doing my seven cut, and I'm just kind of drawing a little curve to make it a two cut. So I'm not going stop, repower, it's continue on with the cut. So I'll do that to you, Jason. So I get him going to St. George, and I just kind of fall over to take that risk. You want to be targeting relatively close to the base of their guard, as that's going to make them more likely to try and drop their, uh, their basket down, which is very good for you, as it very easily sets up a cut to the inside of the face. But Following this, so Jason tacks my head, 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 arm, I move into the outside guard. From here I'm going to repose to his head as we have before, head, head, now I'm going to show the same, which causes him to do his outside guard as well. So we both now learned how to not fall for that. Following this is going to be just back to old familiar, so he attacks me, head, head, now he's going to go for my flank, which when we do it fluidly, just kind of makes it look like I go to the medium guard, then move outside of it. But this same thing can still be applied if you jump into St. George, because we talked about before, from here, I just focus on sweeping the tip down and across, and I can very easily prevent this from hitting my flank. So this time we'll put a little more emphasis on it. We'll do head, head. So head, head, flank. So there I hovered and then moved, and I still have plenty of time. And then I do the same to him. So really, what the crux of this lesson is going to be is the idea of St. George is great, still take it, because people are going to be throwing sevens at you. But be aware that from the seven, I can easily target any part of the outside of your body. If you're not ready to move your sword, you're going to be in for a bad time. Now, one thing I want to talk about this is that you notice that I talk about moving the blade, not the basket. I even mentioned that getting them to move the basket is a good thing. When you're first starting out, either teaching or learning, you may find you're in the habit, and you'll still get caught doing this, wherein you try to shorten your arm to defend even the lowest opening into this quasi outside guard that isn't particularly good. This also happens when people attack the wrist, you try to bring your basket down. If you can provoke someone into doing this, you've basically got a free shot. So I'll show what that looks like. So this time I'm going to attack Jason. So head, head, I target something on his outside, but I get him to kind of crumple up. As soon as I have that, I can go ahead and just stay in my lunge and fire out with anything toward the inside line or even going over into a seven. As once someone crumples up like this, be it inside or outside, you're really golden. The thing that can save you if this happens is going to be, so now you will attack my head, so head, head, uh-oh, I crumpled, this isn't good, what can I do? His next attack is going to be coming in, I'm going to recover back off of my shift with another parry. I was just recently at an event where I fought some Italian Sabrists who love to fight off of their lunge, and they will force you to do a couple bad parries, and without a doubt being able to shift, something's wrong, recover was very, very beneficial. So I highly recommend that you use this lesson 
to see if you can't add that in. So if you do a bad parry, get out, as opposed to trying to continue. But otherwise, thank you very much, Jason. And that was going to be lesson seven. Not a terribly complex lesson, but a lot of really good, valuable information in there. Next week, we'll be tackling lesson eight, which once again is going to be somewhat simplistic. And then we only have two more lessons to go, and then we're done. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll go over some other techniques another time.